spend just a couple of minutes going through how you would plot a graph of displacement versus force. Okay. Force was our manipulated variable in this activity. Uh, you can see a data table up on the board right now. You see mass and displacement. This is exactly what one group actually collected. Now, we don't want to plot the graph of displacement and mass. We want to plot it of displacement and force. That's okay, because we can fairly easily find force from the mass. The way we're going to do that, let's create a new table. Let's, let's go over here, force in newtons. And now we want to multiply the force, or the mass, sorry, by 9.81. So let's say equals, let's sell, say cell A2, click cell A2, and multiply that by 9.81. All I've done there is said 0 times 9.81, and that should give me a value of 0. Now let's click in the bottom right-hand corner, drag that down. That copies the formula down. So you can see that I've got cell A8 times 9.81, cell A11 times 9.81. It's all those values of masses times 9.81. Force is done. Displacement? Now yeah, let's, let's bring that over here. Just copy and paste the displacement over there, just so it's all together. Now, to go to plot that graph, I'm going to highlight my y-axis. Not the title of the y-axis, just the variables on the y-axis, or the numbers on the y-axis. In Microsoft Excel, you're going to go Insert. You're going to insert a scatter plot, and you're going to select the first option. It's going to look something like that, which is not a great straight line. But that's OK, because what that's actually showing me right now is displacement on the y-axis and the trial number on the x-axis not the force. What I want to do to get the force on the x-axis is select my data, edit. You can see on the y-axis, it's already got the right column. On the x-axis, it's got nothing other than the trial number. So I'm going to select my range, highlight my x-axis or uh, my x-axis uh, variables, click this little button here, click OK, click OK, and that's a much better straight line. Now what I want to do is format it. So maybe let's select a chart layout. The first one I find is the best one because that gives you an option to fill in your chart title, you fill in your axes along with your units. Yeah, I like to delete this. It doesn't really matter, but I just like to get rid of that. And then finally, what you do want to do is click on a data point, right click, add a trend line. By default, it will go to linear. That's what we want because that looks like a pretty good straight line. But click on this little button at the bottom that says display equation on the chart. All of a sudden, you now have a straight line there. You now have an equation on the chart. And that equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b. The slope of my graph is 0 0.0706. It says y is equal to 0 0.0706 minus 0 0.0018. My y-intercept is negative 0.0018. Remember we said you'd either get a zero y-intercept or really, really, really small, very close to zero? That's pretty small, isn't it? It should theoretically be zero. This is really, really close to zero. So we can still ignore that y-intercept. Focus on the slope here, 0 0.0706. Find the inverse of that. And then, of course, that's going to give me my spring constant. Does that make sense? What would my spring constant be here? Let's pull up a calculator. Okay, let's say... Uh, 1 divided by 0. Point, sorry, 1 divided by 0 0.0706. My spring constant in this case would be 14.2. Good. Now, I suspect your spring constant, because you all use similar springs, is going to be in that range. If you get a number that's like 600, you're probably wrong. If you get a number that's in that range of 14, 18, 12, somewhere in that range, you're probably right. Good? All right, that's it.